try to live my life wrong. People don't really understand who I am. I love you. In the sports world, I am the bad guy. I'll be lying and say that it didn't affect me. That's what kind of built his fire. He is Mr. Triple Double. Double. We living for the future now. I'm Russell. Week seven already. Man, the season's moving quick. Another week, another opportunity with DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. New customers can bet just $5 on any NFL team. And if they win, you win $200 in free bets. And it's that simple. If Sportsbook isn't available in your state yet, DraftKings won't leave you empty-handed. Everybody can play for huge cash prizes all season long with DraftKings Daily Fantasy Sports Contests. Make sure you get in the mix. DraftKings is giving all new customers a free shot at millions of dollars in total prizes with their first deposit. All right, Stack, who you got in week seven? I got 49ers over the coach. I like the young quarterback. He's starting to get his feet wet. Let's see if he can get some wins. I got uh, Aaron Rodgers and the Green Bay Packers over the Washington Football Club. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use the code SMOKE and bet just $5 on any team, and you can win up to $200 in free bets. If they win, you win with promo code SMOKE this week at DraftKings Sportsbook the official sports betting partner of the NFL. Welcome back to All the Smoke. Jack, what's happening? Hey, you know, Good? Yeah. I Say, like, you, hey, yeah. I like on. them. I, li I like them. No, give me my props. My hands ain't clammy. Whatever y'all call them, yeah. clammy, whatever that shit is. You I wish my shit dry today. Yeah, you got your pH balance right? Yeah, I'm good. I'm hydrated. Good I like your shoes and your sweatshirt, though. Appreciate you it, bro. You today. Appreciate it, bro. Man, we back, man. Season three. Uh, it's good to be back. We back rolling. We back in L.A. We got family in the building today, man. Last uh, name. One of one of one of our homies, my old next door neighbor, current Los Angeles Ram, Deshaun Jackson. Welcome What's up, to the show, bro. bro. Do, man, I pre appreciate y'all having me, yes, man. Sir, about time. It's, appreciate it's you right finding now. time. I mean, you're back home. Yeah. L.A. Rams. I mean, you're going into your 14th season. Yeah, 14. 14 deep. We both play 14. 14. Right. Yep. And, and and you're playing at home. Talk to us about that. Man, for me, it's like everything come back full circle, you know, to, to be in the NFL, to come from Los Angeles, California, born and raised, to play Pop Warner, to grow up in a sports city, never really been able to play at home. Right. You know, I done played 13 years in the NFL, and every time it's time to go to season, I got to go to Lee. East Coast, Philly, yeah. Tampa, Washington. So for me, this this, this time back around is special, man, and it means a little, a little yeah. more, man. But talk to us about, because we talked off air, yeah. I got a chance to play at home. You never got a chance to play at home, right? Close, but not home. <laughs> How you got to kind of change your whole mentality because you're older now. You know what I mean? You're on, sure. you're on your last, you know, handful of years, you know, God willing. Uh, you know, obviously aspirations the goals to, to test that Hall of Fame, which you're on pace to. Talk to the fans about how you kind of had to come back to L.A., but also, you know, keep that focus. Well, first off, when I first came back, when I realized I was coming back home, because I kind of knew before, got a great relationship with Sean McVay, so... Um, you know, when I found out I was coming back home, the first thing I did was change the phone number. <laughs> Changed both numbers right away. I'm like, ah, I'm going back home. It's Hollywood. Right. You know, the hood. You know, I go hang out with the homies. I'm like, the first thing I'm doing is changing my number. So um, I remember Sean McVay actually, like the next day, we I signed and then he hit me like, damn, I can't even get a hold of you. I'm like, yeah, coach, I had to change the number. He's like, man, it's that serious, something. But for me, like coming back home, you know, I'm I'm 34 years old, you know, going to 14th year. So for me, like, you know, I, I know these last few years, I got a real mm -hmm. shot at, you know, solidifying the Hall of Fame spot. And for me, you know, being being able to be one, one of the biggest deep threats ever, you know, passing Jerry Rice. Randy Moss. Randy Moss, you get mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So for me, growing up, like, that's what I had inspiring me, you know. And for me to be in them same conversations with them type of dudes, like, I had to come back and let people know that I'm not here to party. I'm not mm -hmm. here to be at One Oak and, like, no, nah, I'm here to 
do my thing on the field and win a Super Bowl, bro. That's my main focus. So I, I had to, you know, solidify that first. I mean, that that, that kind of leads us into our next question. I mean, you have a team that, that that has a chance to win a ring. 100%. You know what I mean? And you're back at home on top of that. So talk to us what that atmosphere has been like. Uh, you know, teaming up with Matthew Stafford, you guys got a loaded O, loaded defense. Yeah. What's that environment been like? Man, honestly, you know, I, I done played on some good teams. Going back to the year 2010 when Michael Vick, LaShawn McCoy, mm -hmm. uh, Jerry Mack. Like, we had we had some dogs back in Philly, but, I mean, to to fast forward everything right now, 2021, like you said, Aaron Donald, Jalen mm. Ramsey. Like, I, I'm playing with some dogs. Like, legitimately All top best players in the league right in now. Position. Future you know, Aaron famers, Donald, yeah. what, he was the number two overall player. Jalen Ramsey, I think, was 13th in the top 100. So, for me to be on this team, man, like, I, I I knew stepping in, like, we really got a shot to win the Super Bowl and the Super Bowl here in mm. L.A. But, you know, we don't want to peak too soon. It's a long season, right, you know. Right, right, right. Y'all Cowboys doing good. Green Bay, it's a lot of good teams. But we know, you know, if we just keep our head down, chin up mentality, and keep working every day, if we look at every week like we want to go, we 0-0 zero zero trying to go 1-0 yeah. at the end of the season, I mm -hmm. think, you know, that, that'll have a stand in the last one. You mentioned uh, Coach McVay. You had a prior relationship with him. Sp uh, speak to how you guys' uh, relationship started. Man, back in what was that? Two thousand fourteen. I remember when. Uh, so in twenty thirteen, I got released um, by the Philadelphia Eagles. Everybody, you know, who knows me knows about that situation. And uh, you know, I had a chance to go to a few teams, but it was it was personal. I had to stay in that division, NFC East. Like I'm like Eagles just cut me. Like there's only a few teams I really wanted to go to. So I'm like Washington was the team. Jay, you had Jay Gruden, you had Sean McVay, who was, you know, Jay Gruden was the head coach, Sean McVay was the officer coordinator, so right when they realized I was a free agent, they like, we got to figure out a way to get this little motherfucker on our team, like, <laughs> whatever we got to do, we've been seeing him torch us for years, you know, right. just playing Washington and, you know, for doing all that, so our relationship really started early, man, like, going back to 2014, I played three years in Washington, and, like, I think out of the three years I played there, two years, I went over a 1,000 yards, had like nine touchdowns, like 60. Like we was balling, you know. So flip side to come back now and seeing this progress, like the dude is a genius, bro. Mm -hmm. I, I really look at him like on the Bill Belichick, Andy Reid. I mean, uh, Belichick, Andy Reid. Like he has the smarts and the way he puts his players in positions to out, to always beat the defense, bro, it's like he, he a goat for what he do. Mm -hmm. How was it growing up in the Crenshaw neighborhood of L.A.? <laughs> Man, you, you rest know, in peace, I mean, nip. yeah, re, you know, mm -hmm. my dog, rest in peace, Nip, neighborhood Nip, man. Um, you know, for me, I I, I think it kind of instilled, you know, th that that greatness, that like that competitive nature. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Like, we really didn't have no hope. We ain't really, you know, we had dreams and desires, but we ain't really. It was only certain few influences we really had to look up to. You mm -hmm. get what I'm saying? Positive. And, yeah, on some positive, like you know, you you going to the store, you know, it's dudes at the corner store hanging out, gang banging, selling drugs. You get what I'm saying? So. On a daily basis, you know, I, I was lucky and fortunate to have a pops around me that like seen, you know, that side of it. And he like, nah, I'm gonna take your little. We we going to football, basketball, track, bait, like everything, every sport. Cause he knew if I was sitting at the right. crib or at home, what I would be Ooh. getting into, mm -hmm. you know. So for me, I think it just installed me to just go out there and want to be different. Like it, it was something about looking at the OGs, looking up to him. Like man, I want to do that, but it's like. I, I really wanted to do it the positive way, where I could go be on television, where I could all my dudes back in the hood see me, Deshaun Jackson on national television. I'm rapping for my city and where my hood is, you know. So for me, that's what made me inspired, and, and it really wanted to go out there and do good for my my city. So the the, the you could say that the the love for sports came from uh, your parents or from or from you. You uh, attended Beach Poly Polytech High School. Yeah. Played baseball, ran track. The, the love of sports come from was instilled from your pops, or just something you picked up. Um, I mean, I I think it, it it come hand in hand. You know, my my pops grew up uh, P Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, and when he grew up, he wasn't really able to play sports. Mm -hmm. You know, his pops worked in the steel mill. He like we work around here. Mm -hmm. Like, ain't no sports. You're not doing none of that shit. So, my pops never really was able to live out his dream because he loved sports. Right. You know, so he was like, shit, I'm gonna have kids, and I'm pushing all my kids <laughs> to play sports. Like, shit, if I couldn't make it, right. I'm finna have kids, and one of these little niggas making it to the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> you know, which in reality was my older brother at first, and then you know that wasn't really his dream or desire. So then you got me, this little kid. I'm like, shit, I was a majority around my pops the most out of all you know our siblings. So for me, I just installed like. Just growing up and just like I say, just being competitive in the streets, playing sideline pop, th throw up tackle. Like yeah. I, mean, I was just one of the little fastest, hardest dudes, and I was the toughest. I was the littlest one, but the toughest one. So I was like, man, you know, 
I installed in me at an early age to be great, bro. Mm-hmm. You was a major league prospect. What, what, what position in baseball did you play? A lot of people don't know that, though. <laughs> Man, yeah, so that's an interesting story, too. So my pops, he actually loved baseball. So this is the story about the baseball. So my pops loved baseball, and he like, I'm taking you to do all these sports. You basketball, football, you rent a track, you doing all... You got to play baseball for me. So it was like he almost like forced me to play baseball. So I was good at baseball, but I ain't really had a love for it. Like I mm -hmm. love playing football. I love doing everything else. So for me, I was real good at baseball, but I just didn't have that love for it. But looking back at it now, I'm like, if I could do it all over, mm -hmm. I probably would have did the <laughs> baseball. Right? They get 300 guaranteed. Yeah. Like I'm like, man. But you know, everything happened for a reason, bro. Word. But yeah, I was actually a heavy baseball player. What position man. you play? I played center field, second base. Speed. I played everything. I used to be mm -hmm. like left fielder, right fielder, don't go in the gap. Like anything hitting the gap, Got I'm putting everything down, mm -hmm. bro. Yeah. Like for real. You mentioned uh, Nip earlier. What was your relationship with him like? Man, shh, Nip, man. So I remember back in probably like 2000, like 2001, like I think I was a freshman in high school. And, um, you know, growing up in Lamert Park, you know, Crenshaw and Slauson was literally mm -hmm. 10, 15 blocks down the street. So, you know, going up, Crenshaw, Audubon, like, I used to know Nip. Like, we were probably like 13, 14 years old. But back then, Nip was just a pretty boy, curly hair. Like, he ain't had a long hair back then. He had the curly hair. He was just always had the white long tee on. You know, back then, the pro clubs, mm -hmm. everybody mm -hmm. wearing pro clubs. 4X, 5X. 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 You yeah. feel me? So it's just yeah. like, just knowing <laughs> Nip back then, he was just like the little player. Like, pretty boy dude, you know? And then it's like, I remember like around high school, he started rapping and I'm like, damn, is he re rapping? All right, we trying to, trying to figure out if he hard or not. So, you know, back then, really nobody really knew about him. Then, you know, he got the Slauson boys. Then you just start seeing him out on Crenshaw and Slauson, out the back of the bins, trunk, popping the trunk, giving out CDs. Like, I'm like, man, this nigga really taking this shit serious. So, for me, I saw his, his, his work. I saw what he put into it and to look up to, you know, what he did, inspired everybody and just how he tried to, you know, provide jobs and just, mm -hmm. you know, changing the community, man. Like me and Nip go back, bro. But, you know, he definitely inspired for the Crenshaw community, man. Mm, rest in peace. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, high school football, 60 catches, over uh, 1,000 yards, 15 touchdowns. Mm -hmm. What was it like out there playing in high school? Well, Men like them Friday yeah, night games. Yeah, first of all, shit. I mean, high school, like Long Beach, I went to the number one high school in all of America, like li literally probably put the most people in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So growing up, obviously, I'm not from Long Beach. Everybody think I'm from Long Beach, but I'm not from Long Beach. So I grew up, like you said, Crenshaw, South Central. And as a as a uh, eighth grade, I'm trying to figure out like, man, what high school I'm going to go to? Now, my pops, he was like the biggest scout of America. Like he mm -hmm. already had deals and broke it in with this high school coach. <laughs> he going to Venice. He going to Crenshaw. He going to Doris. He, nah, he going to Westchester. So I'm sitting back like trying to really figure out what high school I'm going to go to. And then my older brother was like, if you really want to go to the best high school and you know for a fact they gonna have scholars like they gonna have scholars they gonna have coaches coming in like the best of the best you like we going to Long Beach party so I'm like thinking about it, I'm like all right shit let's go but when I went literally we had uh Herschel Dennis mm -hmm. Darnell Bing Mercedes Lewis man you're right like it was literally like seven dudes that was going division one like all had top scholarships from SC UCLA so I was a freshman going into that so I'm like Shit, all I got to do is, even if I'm halfway decent, I'm going to go get a Straight. Division One scholarship. Mm -hmm. So, you know, coming out there from L.A. and being one of the best to play Pop Warner and coming to Poly, like, I really had to earn that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Because it was really dogs. Like, Long Beach Poly, like, I'm telling you, they the best of the best. So, for me to come all the way from L.A. and come to Poly, like, I really came from outside in and was like really an insider you feel mm -hmm. what i'm saying so it was fun man it was it was big games though like i was prepared to play on a big level right. being Early. at poly because once i got to college that shit was like it was next was what's used next? To it. yeah like right. nfl what's next like i'm killing that shit just because the mentality and being around people that was like really good mm -hmm. at it. i mean you topped your high school career off with uh the mvp of the all-american game uh who was recruiting you and and, and why did you end up going to cal Man, I had shit. I had the, all the schools, Florida State, the Miamis, the Oklahomas, the LSUs. Like, I had probably over 100 plus offers. And, uh, you know, I was close to going to LSU. That was Nick mm. Saban was there, man. There was something about that that culture out there, man, that food and women. Like, I'm like, man, the, the, <laughs> the South got me. Louisiana had me. How many me. trips did you take? I didn't know to well, cut I, you off. I took, I took, I think, four trips. I, I went to Oklahoma, I went to LSU. 
And it was, like I said, when I went to LSU, it was just something about like just how they treated me, the food. And I'm like, man, it's, it's, it's something about that South, you know. Like <laughs> I'm like, I, I almost had it, but then Nick Saban ended up leaving, and he went to the Miami Dolphins. So when he left, I'm like, man, that's out. And then um, I had SC. I committed. I was a year SC one. They, uh, shoot, who they had? Uh, Reggie Bush, Lindell White. That, they just had won the um the national championship, and I remember they called me after the game. Had uh, Pete Carroll in there. It was all hype on the bus, turned up, like, yeah, you coming? I'm like, yeah, I'm coming, I'm committed. <laughs> so I commit, and then I just felt like, man, they was, they was, like, giving these dudes from out of state, like, extra, like, like I wanted number one, and they ain't give me number one. So I'm like, they started, like, showing dudes out of state more love than they showing interstate, because they was like, oh, poly dudes used to go into SC, we're anyway. going to take it for granted. Like, he coming here. So I'm like, you know what? I'm shaking it. And the mm. year before that, Cal just beat SC when you had, they had Marshawn Lynch, uh, uh, Aaron Rodgers, they mm -hmm. beat him in the um, in the Coliseum and upset. I'm like, you know what? Instead of joining the best, I'm gonna go somewhere and beat the best. And that was just the mentality I had. Like, I ain't want to just be labeled as somebody that just went there just because they thought they had me in their back seat. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that was my decision on that. What was your record against SC? Man, don't do that. I was 0 and 3, but every, <laughs> hey, look, hey, look, every, okay. every, how did you do? Every time we played them, they had like three dudes on me. They was like, we not letting this little dude kill us. But now I, I had some good games versus them. Obviously, I was a vocal point when I played against them, and they definitely was like, yeah, we ain't gonna let him ball. Mm -hmm. So I did cool though, but yeah, we was on three. It hurt. Did Aaron Rodgers were kind of be was recruiting you too, or kind of the guys that showed you a little bit? He did, man, and like so. I so Aaron Rodgers was a junior when I was a fresh, or no, he was a. He was a junior when I was a senior in high school. So when I'm coming there, you know, I'm like, shit, Aaron Rodgers, one of the best quarterbacks in college football. I'm like, I'm going there. So the minute I commit, he enters the NFL and mm. leaves. So he left his junior year. So right. I came in and he wasn't even there no more. But, you know, we had, like I said, we had Marshawn Lynch, Justin Forsett. We had some, we had some good, some good dudes. Can there. you imagine though? Aaron, oh, you, and oh, Marshawn Mar all yeah, we on the same team. team. We could have won, won a national championship. Yeah, we'd have won the national that year. Cause that, that year, that next year, we was actually like we was number two in the nation, and we ended up losing to freaking like Oregon State or mm -hmm. some crazy fluke shit. But man, yeah, I was thinking about that shit. I'm like, damn, just imagine if we if he'd have stayed and we'd have played like a full year together, it would have been, been scary. Special. You was number two at Cal. Y'all, y'all, nah, yeah, we, yeah, we was the highest rank. We was number two. We started like five and zero. Oh. We was on a uh, college game day. We played Oregon at Oregon. I went crazy. I had like three touchdowns, like 180 yards. Like I went crazy. So I remember that game. I was came up. You know they do the. Uh, the broadcast thing after the game would bring me up. I had a big ass suit on. That was back in the day when you know we wore the Steve our, Harvey's. Yeah, we went our suits big shit. I'm yeah. on there talking and shit. And but it was like, man, we went on a downhill after that. We we lost like the next like four games, bro. Mm. But we we was number two of the day shit, bro. <laughs> At one just point. went downhill. <laughs> um, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, that was during the We Believe time too, right? Yeah, he was out there while we sure. was rocking for sure right over the way. Yeah, because yeah, no, I remember definitely. I checked one of you guys' games out one time. Yeah, that was that was a big game, man. Were you guys able to get out to any of those games, or you watch them on TV, or what was it like during your college experience out there? No, nah, it was it was definitely big. Um, for for us looking up to to y'all, man, which I used to do back back in Golden State, like man, y'all was really like a culture, man. Like you know, BD obviously respect. You know, shout out big bro BD. Um, bro was there. I mean, you know, y'all y'all had a wave out there, man. And for us, like y'all the culture, bro. I you know, I ain't, I'm not even gonna sit here and, and, <laughs> and act like it ain't big, like what y'all did and how y'all carried y'all game and just like what y'all meant for the for the culture, bro. Like we we all looked up to that. You know, me like growing up, I'm a smaller dude, so the guys that I really looked up to is the Michael Vicks, the Allen Iversons, mm -hmm. you know, the Kobe's, the the dudes your child all respected and respected you, vice right. versa. So right. That mentality, man, like it's much respect to what y'all doing and continuously still doing how y'all tapped in with the youth and, you know, your your boys, your twins, you know, mm -hmm. I I respect everything you're doing with them. Mm -hmm. I love to see it, bro, because it give me something to look up to when I'm done playing ball, you know? Appreciate mm -hmm. that. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Uh, right. What was your relationship like with uh, Marshawn? <laughs> Marshawn, so, so it's an interesting story about Marshawn. So obviously Marshawn, Oakland Tech. Oakland, California. Oakland to the fullest. Yeah. To the full, you know, North Oakland, family first, you know, shout yeah. out my brother. But uh, so coming from LA, you know, LA is a little, I ain't gonna say a little, it's a lot different mm -hmm. than the Bay Area. So, you know, me growing up, you got gangs, you got bloods, you got cribs, you know, you got different sets. So for me growing up in the in the LA culture, going to Cal, 
at first I didn't understand what was going on because you got dudes saying blood and cuz in one sentence. It's like, yeah, <laughs> they know they basically saying you blood and and you and covering the same sentence, at all. but they don't even care. They just talking. So it's like they culture out there is just total different. It's like, and they not even in tune. Like they're literally. You don't even think they from California, bro, out there, because yeah. they're not even in tune with the LA culture, bro. They got their own culture. So for me, I'm like, Marshawn was just himself, bro. Like, he didn't really care. Like, he was street, but he was smart. Like, he was intelligent. You know, he did good in school. Like, a lot of people don't know mm -hmm. how good he did in school. Like, he damn near was graduated before he left Cal. Mm. You get what I'm saying? So the respect level, me and him, I remember I was a freshman and he was a sophomore. And I came in, I was one of the fastest on the team. And he looking at me, he like, who, who who this little nigga think? He said, nigga, line it up. Nigga, let's race. I'm like, this big one. He about 226 <laughs> feet. Like, he looking at me like, really? Like, nigga, let's race. So I'm like, you sure you want to race? You know, I'm cocky, young nigga. I'm like, you sure you want to race? He's like, yeah, line it up. And we got out there, we raced. I beat him, but he he he, he like put there. up a fight, though. Yeah. <laughs> he wasn't slow. Marshawn wasn't slow. But I'm like, it just gave me a respect for Brett Different, because he knew he was, he knew I was fashionable, but he was like, yeah, line it up. He wanted to get out there yeah, anyway. Yeah, bro. So it was like, much respect to money, man. He's a good mm -hmm. dude, bro. Yeah. So decorated college career, uh, one of the top receivers in the country. You make your jump to the league, second round pick. Did you have a chip on your shoulder? For sure. And, and the, re the reason why I say I had a chip, it's like, all right, for me, college, right? You like every every step of the way from high school, college, like I always been the best, always been, you know, stats there, proven, everything was proven for me. So so coming out my junior year, I actually put in a little note and they was like, it came back and it was like guaranteed they didn't say guaranteed, but they, they give you a projection. Mm -hmm. So they say anywhere from first round to like the, the end of first round. So like the first pick to the twenty fifth pick. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, shit, all right, I'm gone. I ain't no point in going coming back to college for my, my senior year when they already solidified that. So I'm like, I'm gone. So I enter in the NFL. And I remember back then my coach, it was Jeff Tefford at the time, had like a little personal relationship with, you know, him, him and my dad like had like a little beef. And my posh used to be cussing out after the game. Like, if my son don't get 10 catches, 200 yards, and I'm cussing you out after the game. So Paz was turned up after every game. You know, Paz drinking turned up. He, I ain't had a game he wanted me to have. Coach hearing about it. So I, I feel like that kind of hurt me going into the, to the league because, you know, Jeff Teffer was kind of asked about certain situations. And he was like, yeah, I think his dad could be a problem. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm -hmm. And it just was like that kind of hurt my draft stats, you know. And I took it personal because all the teams that passed on me, that first year when I was in Philadelphia, every team in the past on me, I made them pay. Mm -hmm. you know, my first year, we we went to the NFC Conference Championship game where I thought I scored the winning touchdown. We going to the uh, to the Super Bowl, but Larry Fitzgerald came down, did some crazy. Mm -hmm. That was the year uh, the Steelers played um, Arizona in the, in the Super mm -hmm. Bowl. But yeah, that was my rookie year, bro, and it was, it was lit, man. Mm -hmm. It was lit. What's it like stepping on that stage? Though? I mean, you all about five nine. Oh, yeah, my five I mean, ten. Jack probably, yeah, yeah, my, 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 give me my five ten. I probably mean, six feet with shoes. Shit. <laughs> five ten, how much you weigh? Right now, I'm, I'm like one eighty five. One eighty five. But when I first came in, I was one sixty nine. Ooh. Like, they gave me. They was like five nine, whatever, like seven core, whatever it was. I like you're like the 10. average height of an average man. Yeah. And to think that Jack, Jack made a joke like you played. You got a. Would you say NBA years in the NFL? For your size, though, like yeah, no one, I mean, impressive. really, really hats off sure. to you, bro. I mean, obviously, we homies, and I think we people kind of take that shit for granted, but for, for you to accomplish, and you're not done, but for you to make it 14 years in the league at your size, that, that says a lot about you, man. It no, says a it, lot about it, you. It definitely does, and I, I appreciate that, but, you know, it, I, I just take it back to my mentality, just growing up, how I grew up, having the pops around me. You know, they really just didn't really care about anything. Like if I if I wanted to envision myself or I wanted to do something, I'm gonna do it. And that's just been my mentality the whole time. And obviously I ain't the biggest, but every time I step on the field, I feel like I'm the I'm biggest. Giant, you know what right. I'm saying? Like I feel like I'm lion hearted. And it's like I don't care how big you is, I don't care. My pop said never fair, man, regardless how big, how small he put his pants on just like you. You feel right. what I'm saying? So for me that's just always been my mentality, bro. But uh you know, I definitely speak some numbers, and like you said, I'm still not done, still playing at a high level. And, uh, you know, I, I take pride in this shit. Every, mm -hmm. every time I wake up, every time I step on the field, bro, I want to be the best doing it, you know? And, mm -hmm. and, and I am who I am for a reason, because that's that mentality, you know? It's Straight just up. like that that mama mentality, you know? Facts. Y'all played against him, y'all know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 21 what, way. What did, uh, yeah. what did being stamped by Jerry Rice when he said uh, he had this kid has all the talent in the world, what did that mean for you? For, for arguably be the greatest receiver of all time to stamp you like that? 
Yeah, that, that, that was a special moment because I was, that was before I even played the NFL mm -hmm. game. Like I was, I had opportunity because at that time, my agency that I was signed with, he was signed to him as well too. So um, I had a chance to work out with him I, and we ran routes. He was like, I want you to run every route. And I ran literally every route from route one to the go route. And he was like, I only got one route I want to work with you on. I'm like, I just ran like 20 routes. And you telling me just one route? So I'm trying to, I'm interested to so what he going to say. He was like, you just running too fast on the speed out. I want you to slow it down, get under control, and you master that. Ain't nobody going to be able to mess with you. So from day one, I'm like, I'm thinking he finna critique me. I'm thinking he finna what give me What route is that? What is yeah, that? speed out. It's like a quick out, five yard out. Okay. But he was saying, I'm so fast, I need to run that in under control and still be fast, but not running too fast where I'm like out of control running mm -hmm. a route. So that route is like one of the easiest routes. So that was the only route he critiqued me on. So I'm like, I could be special, bro. And I knew mm -hmm. that from day one. I'm like, I do my shit and, and, and stay on it and work. Yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a good ride. What's the fastest time you ever ran? In the what, period, 40, 40 yeah. 40, the fastest time I uh, I ran before, it was I was in I was in college. I want to say like my junior year, I ran a 4 2 4. Mm. God damn. <laughs> That's that Dion speed. Talk about your rookie your rookie experience. When I came in, I just had that mentality like I didn't really care who the starting receiver was. Like I'm coming in, I'm taking somebody's spot. Point blank. Like that's my me coming in. I don't sometimes these young dudes they come in, they be asking questions. I'm like, bro, you can't make the game bigger than it is. It's, we've been playing this shit since a little kid in the park. Just how I'm sure it is for basketball. Right. Like once you got to the NBA, you can't be like, oh my God, the lights and all these fans scream. Nah, we gotta tune in and play ball. Right. So me. I had the mentality was the game ain't going to be bigger than it is. It's still football. And I think these young dudes come in, they be like a deer in the headlights because they don't understand, like, it's still football. It's still basketball. It's a sport. It's a game that we love growing up. But don't make it bigger. If you mm -hmm. make it bigger than it is, then you're going to always be behind the eight ball trying to figure out, damn, how can I make the game not as big as it is? Right. Like, no, I'm the game. I'm the moment mm. that's big. And that's my philosophy on that shit, bro. It's, it's, not, it's a game, bro. We have fun with this shit and play at a high level. Mm. Talk to him. <laughs> For sure. Who were your vets that you leaned on in rookie year as soon as you got in the league? Good question, man. So when I came in, I I, I had some real OGs, man. A special. I'm going to give you the names first, and I'm going to give you a special story about a situation in my rookie year. But So I came in, I had Don McNabb was my quarterback, Brian Westbrook, the running back, um, Asante Samuel, uh <sighs> Brian Dawkins, I said. Brian. I was about to say, was Brian Dawkins was on that Brian, team. Brian Dawkins, um, few few dudes, but um, the the special story. So I was uh, I was in like my seventh eighth game, and uh, we was playing in Chicago. This one, Lance Briggs, uh, Brian Erlacher, like dogs, like you know, Brian Erlacher legitimately could be one of the best, you know, mm -hmm. linebacker linebackers to play the game. So mm -hmm. we playing versus these dudes, and I'm like. This one of them games where I'm like, damn, I'm really playing versus some, some dudes that could damn near kill me if I run across the middle, right? So I score touchdown. I'm balling in, in the game. So it, it become a, a point where they punted the ball, and I'm back punting the ball. And I had, like, clown that had the ball in one hand. I fumbled, but we ended up getting the ball back. Well, I must have came to the sideline. Brown Doggins must have grabbed me up, snatched me up. You do that shit again, cause you know he didn't really cuss. Yeah, he was all up. about God and like, but he came at you <laughs> on a crazy way, yelling at me. If you do that again, I'm like, man, this nigga talking to me like my daddy. Well, I was spooked. I'm like, man, I ain't messing with that dude. But he got on me. But it was just the respect, bro. Like you got real OGs when you messing up and you doing wrong, they gonna correct you. That. You get what I'm you saying? But yeah, that's what installed in greatness in me. You know, he can, he can, guys like him can do that though, cause you know he out there about to die to win the game. He can, he putting his body everything. <laughs> he on the doing line, bro. everything. He literally legitimately popping his neck out of socket shoulder. I didn't seen him like crazy. Like he was he really was Weapon X on the field. He wasn't Brian Dawkins. Like he turned into Weapon X on the field. Mm. Like he he had a Brian Dawkins locker room and he had a Weapon X locker room. And the Weapon X locker room <laughs> had all the X-Men and all these characters in there. And when he went on the field, was, who he, was? he was Weapon X. Oh, he really had a locker bro, like that? Yes, bro. He had two lockers, bro. Like wow. I'm telling you, bro. Dude was, he was a special dude. Bro. <laughs> he one of the best stuff. though. Hell yeah. yeah. He was. What was your welcome to the NFL moment? That one moment that when mm. you was like, damn, I'm here. I'm I'm really here. Off the block, I'm here. I think I think Lyndon Fletcher, man. So we we was playing, I think it was early, early in the season, rookie year. I think probably I want to say the second or third game. Lyndon Fletcher was a linebacker for the uh back then there was the Redskins, Washington Redskins. And uh I had caught like a 
a little five yard quick little route and I was right over the like the middle of the field. Like mm. look, guys my size won't mm -hmm. really like to go yeah. around that mm -hmm. area. Yeah. So yeah. it was like a little five yard pass, Don McNabb like hit me. I caught the ball and all I remember was like walking to the sideline and everything was just like spinning. <laughs> I'm like, I was out for the rest of the game. I ain't go back in the game. I ended up having like a concussion, but I'm like, buddy smacked me. He like He caught you good. He had me like I ain't know where I was at. I ain't even gonna lie. But yeah, that was that was one of the moments. In London, he's a big dude. Big dude, bro. And he big was he dude. was small, but he was like a stocky, stocky big shit, dude for yeah. a linebacker. That's yeah. like he's like stocky, a bowling ball. Yeah. Boom. Like, yeah. All muscle. Yeah. All I seen, you know how that little video, you got the birds. The Tweety Birds. Yeah, Tweety Birds. I'm like, where am I at? <laughs> <laughs> Talk about the game against my Cowboys. Oh, yeah. No, nah, don't do that. Why are you going to do that, man? Well, you got, I, I, well, you I was almost got your first touchdown. Why <laughs> oh, you talking about that one? Well, you okay. dropped the ball too early, feeling yourself. Yeah, uh, so I'm, I'm going I'm to let you have that one, but I'm going I'm to I'm come <laughs> back. I'm going to speak on that. Momentarily, and I'm gonna come back and hurt your heart with something too. But, uh, I, I remember, I know what you're gonna yeah, do. Um, you know, I was, I was young, man. I was rookie year. Just just at that moment of time, I'm, I'm gonna get out of philosophy. So, for me, growing up playing sports, you're not really able to allow the clown and dance and do all this crazy shit. So, once you get to the NFL, they allow you to, you know, have a have little, a little fun. fun and do some crazy shit. So, for me, <laughs> I can remember that night before the game, I'm like, if I score, I'm just going crazy. Like, I don't care about nothing. I'm getting in the end zone. I'm dancing. I'm doing every dance. I'm trying to just go crazy and have fun. Monday night football or Sunday, mm -hmm. whatever it was, we was the primetime game. Right. So once I caught the ball, I'm damn near close to the end zone. I'm like, I don't even care about this ball no more. Nigga, I'm finna get in this end zone and dance, bro. So that was just <laughs> on my mind. So obviously, dropped the ball a little short. But uh, yeah, that's something that happened. It ain't happened again since then. And then I did it in high school too. But, you know, the one in high school, I was trying to beat the record. Uh, Reggie Bush jumped from like the five yard line in the game versus the UCL versus the Bruins, and he flipped in the end zone. So I'm in the All Star game. I'm like, you know, he jumped from the five. Let me try to jump from the six. So I try to jump from the six. <laughs> nigga, when I got in the air, nigga, I'm like, oh shit, I'm finna bust my ass, and I just dropped the ball because I was I was uh, bracing the impact of how far I tried to jump like a bonehead ass shit. Uh, but um, yeah, you know that happened. I learned uh, from the shit. lid, but it ain't gonna happen again. But uh, yeah, let's talk about that 91 yard touchdown that uh, Michael Vick threw to me on the sideline when yeah. I was back in the end zone on him. Cowboy. Yeah, you turned around on us. <laughs> yeah, turned man. around on us. I remember that. That was that was hurtful. Or that the uh, the punt return, right? The punt return the, versus the Giants. Giants. Yeah. Yeah. Was Giants. I, I got oh, yeah. some plays versus the Cowboys yeah. though. I, I I literally back in my my early days when I was in in Philadelphia, man. I looked at myself as a Giant killer. A cowboy, cowboy killer. killer. Yeah, you killed us. I so killed right. the Redskins too, but it was just like I, it was some personal because I know the the rivals like right. being an Eagle, the rivals with the Cowboys, Heavy. the Giant. Like it's 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 real, bro. Mm -hmm. and, I had a lot of good years, man, on there. <laughs> you got to taste the playoffs in 08. What was your first playoff experience like? Man, the game moved way faster, man. It was like things was moving. Like, you know, being a rookie, adjusting to to my rookie season, I'm like, you know what? It, it's fast, but the playoffs, bro, it moved like – and I'm talking about the first playoff game. Like the wild card game, bro, it was like you would just think everybody just turned up like 20 notches more, and it's like – I don't know why. I guess everybody trying to win the Super Bowl, but it was just like the game was just moving faster, bro. And for me, I just feel like we went on like every game was away. Like we first mm -hmm. game we played, it was in um, Minnesota, right? In Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Then we played, uh, damn. The Giants. Was it? I don't remember. We played yeah. one more and then we went to Boston Arizona. And the NFC Championship. But yeah, every game mm -hmm. was on the road and it was just like for us to not have that home field advantage, like, you know, playing on the road, mm -hmm. it, it's, it's tough. tough. But that's that's what builds character, you know. Like what you gonna do when everything's against you, all adversity, all odds are against you. So for me, I just love silencing the crowd, bro. It's nothing like you going to somebody else's house and standing on their couch and doing whatever the hell you yeah. want, walking out saying we won. Mm. Like what better feeling mm. is that? Working with Donovan McNabb, what was that like? Man, Don Donovan, man, you know. Donovan was an interesting dude, man. Like you know, I, cause you hear not to cut you off, you hear a bunch of shit how him and T.O. still and to, this, don't, yeah. to this day don't get along. So I always wonder what he was like. T.O. say so he want to scrap. Yeah, straight up, it's, it's real. They they had a, a real personal situation, and I could kind of understand it. You know, with with the sense of you no, know, I, I I never really try to talk about people put people down, but it was just like he he was more like on on some selfish, like he was about himself type shit. You yeah. know, like. You could tell, like, with certain quarterbacks, when you're the quarterback and you the you the vocal point, like sometimes you might have to just take it on your shoulder. Like, my bad, I missed that throw, or my bad. Like, just as a a, a, a captain and the a leader for the team, you get what I'm saying. And it was just like certain times he 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 didn't really want to take that 
up on him, you know. And not to say he wasn't a good player or a good person, but it's just like certain times you could tell it was a little more a little more selfish, you know. Mm -hmm. And it was just like as a young dude, you really you you not looking for your quarterback to be that. You looking for your quarterback to embrace you yeah. and and really uplift you, you know. So I could kind of see why him and T.O. Is, is how they are, you know. Andy Reid, what'd you learn from him? Man, fa father figure, man. A a Andy Reid for me was like really like a second father, man. And you know, a special story about that was like I said when I first got drafted. You know, uh, Jeff Teffer told told Andy Reid, you know, some some hurtful things for me because. You know, for me, I, kn I know how my dad was, you know, heavily involved and, in, you know, how he used to go off on my coaches. But I knew it was always coming from a good place in the heart. Because he loved you, know, you at so At the end much. of the day, that's his yeah. son. Right. He wanted his son to be the best and, you know, he wanted him to do the best. So, you know, for me to hear what Jeff Teffer told my dad, you know, on draft day, because right when they drafted me, he got on the phone and was like, basically, we don't want your dad to be no issue. We heard about woo woo. Like, he was basically saying mm -hmm. all the shit that he heard that my pops was doing in college. So, for me... Him and then Andy Reid is from Los Angeles too, so he grew up in Los Angeles. So he knows the young kid coming from LA. He knows the temptation and how it is growing up. But he just respected me. Like he was like, you know, I know how it is for you. I know what your dad meant for you. But he was just like, you know, he was there for me. And he was he was one of them coaches where he didn't really care if he was being too hard. Like you know, you you had them coaches where you like he hard on me, but it's only for the best. It's only for the betterment in me and my career and my life. So. You could respect that a little more, you know, and, and he was he was really like, you know, a father figure in my That's life. What's up? It's a big difference between being on you and, and critiquing you and actually knowing that they care about you. Yeah. I know I've been through that situation too, playing where a coach is being a dick <laughs> and mad at me because, you know, his wife being friendly to me or something like that, you know what <laughs> yeah, I'm saying? Not the wife. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. Whoa. I'm just saying. I was it was a situation like that I, for real. I ain't gonna say nobody names, but I was Whoa. I was young at the time. Whoa. You know right. what I'm saying? You can't help she looking in, in the mirror. But she, but, she but, but she she knew I was young. And yeah. She was like a mother, like because my mother wasn't around. I was there young, mm -hmm. and you know what I mean. And he basically used that against me after I made the rookie All Star game and didn't play me the whole second half of was the season. Was this before or after you kissed her in the mouth? Neither. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta be prepared for Matt's question. You have to be prepared. <laughs> 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 for real. He said, I kiss her in the mouth. You're an asshole, dog. 2009, uh, your father passes. Um, what is it like? I had a situation with Golden State, and that's when me and Jack became really close at the beginning of the season. My mom died of cancer, died within 26 days, trying to play through the season. That whole shit was fucked up. Mm. What was it like for you? being that your father was so integral mm -hmm. in your development and becoming a man and pretty much right when you get to the league you lose him yeah man i mean for, for me that, that that was a tough that was a tough part of my life i was uh i think i was 20 years old um like you said everything my dad meant to me for me did for me right. you know the relationships the bonds we built together um you know, it was one of them things where I'm like, that's my first year in my NFL career. Like everything we planned, everything we dreamed about, envisioned, like all the shit we talked about, what we was gonna be doing. Like my dad was one of them. Was like, like he about to have all these, this, these money, these millions. I'm finna have all these women. I'm about to woo, 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 drive these cars, with the shit nigga, too, jury, right. yeah, like traveling. Right. Like wasn't nothing you can't do. Right. So for me, it was just everything he envisioned. To see how pops went out like that, man. Like, uh, it was hurtful, man. Uh, so. <clears throat> it was we was actually I want to say like October November, so during the season it's early before the playoffs. So he just you know pops like shit. You got a match? I'm coming out to the match. I'm staying with you. I'm chilling like you know I'm driving your cars. Like pops was really like he was like my brother. One of Like we yeah you know like we had a great relationship. So during the season I remember he came out there and stayed with me during the season, and uh, he kind of like just got sick out of nowhere like. He had diabetes, so like he used to always kind of like blame it on the diabetes. Like I just check it when I go back home. Like mm -hmm. I'm straight, and it kind of like became normal where he was like sleeping all day, wasn't really eating, and it was like this was like right around when we was about to make the playoffs. And then I remember my older brother, I think my sister came came to Philly and flew him back to to LA. And then um you know he went to the doctor and they basically diagnosed him with pancreatic cancer. Mm -hmm. And when they uh, diagnosed him with it, it was stage four. You know, it was like too late. They was like, basically gave him like four to five months to live. And uh, this was at the period of time where I was in the playoffs. So I'm I'm playing right. games. Like I'm, I'm at the highest of my highest rookie season, balling, like killing. Like, you know, 
top of the world like and can't nothing else go wrong and you know at the same time you know for me to be losing my pops in the hospital and him struggling i remember him watching the games and shit like my brother there filming him i'm on the tv and he just just everything you know that just kind of mm. meant to me bro so it, it, it was tough man that, that shit was you know still to this day yeah you know? rest in peace to yeah, pop and people don't understand because they think because we're athletes who run a different stage that we're not affected by anything no, and it is the furthest from the truth you know what i mean to try to play with that kind of heavy heart or yeah. with you know the second you're not in action you your mind is there instantly yeah, sure. you know what i mean so it's Rest in peace to Pops for sure, man. You know he's looking down and proud of you. Yes, we be, we it. as athletes, people think, you know, expect us to be so strong and be able to take all type of stuff. But my father was, I didn't have a relationship growing up with my father like you. Yeah. But I, it grew as I got older and became successful. Right. My father's dead as well. I miss my father. So I can imagine. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Being able to, to be raised by him taught by him right or wrong and all that then to get to where you want to be because of him exactly. and not be able to enjoy fully with him Man. i can imagine that bro because i i didn't grow up but just the fact that i made it and i was able to share a little bit of success with my father it kills me now yeah. the man i am today that i can't share that with him you know what i mean sure yeah i think that's the most hurtful like you said just the moments and you just know that what we doing it for like our why you know we always talk about the why like what's your why what are you doing it for is it your mm -hmm. mother your kids one of your homeboys you grew up with, your granny, you know, it's like everybody got that why. So within that why, it's like, that's what I'm doing it for. And for me, that was what I was doing it for. You know, it, it wasn't like he was the only reason, but, you know, he installed who I am today. Like, foundation. without him, I wouldn't be sitting mm -hmm. right here hollering at y'all. Right. Like, that's it's just real. Not to say my mom and other people didn't play their parts, but, you know, he he, he, take, a, he take a lot of mm. that. Rest in peace, Pops. Yep. December, t December 19, 2010, the only game-winning punt return in NFL history. Talk to us about that play and what's going on with the game. Game! Blouses! <laughs> Bitches! <laughs> I mean, <laughs> hey, look, I'm going to just say this. Cause I know I got a lot of people that hate me for, for that play, man. And, um, you know, for me, man, I was just doing what I was supposed to do, man. I was doing my job, as, as anybody right. else would say. Shit, I had an opportunity to send the New York Giants home. They punted to me, which I don't know why the hell they would do that <laughs> anyway. But, uh, I mean, yeah, I, I know that kicker that, or that punter that punted to me right after that game, he got fired. Uh, <laughs> what, was, what was his name? Coughlin, whatever his first day was. Coughlin was crazy throwing his damn. Oh, Tom Coughlin? Yeah, Tom Coughlin throwing his uh, clipboard down. And, but I don't know, man. That play was huge, man. Um, I first, didn't think I didn't think you was gonna pick the ball up because you was looking up, like you. I guess you was looking yeah, to see I where was, everybody I was. was. Already, yeah. I didn't think you was gonna pick the ball up because you <laughs> let it roll for a minute. Hey, listen, bro. When I when I tell you, I didn't think they was kicking it and bouncing me. So of course, when they kicked it in, I'm, I'm thinking he finna kick it out the stadium. Yeah. Like, ain't no way it's standing between these white lines. So once I realized it was coming to me, like you said, I, I, I was I wasn't spooked, but I was more surprised. Like damn, this ball already coming to me. So in the midst of me. Dropping the ball. I'm trying to already set up what I'm doing before I even got this ball. So, yeah. as you see, I dropped the ball, went like a couple yards to the right of me. Now, I'm looking up, and I'm like, I already knew where the ball was, picked it up, and I kind of already had an envision of what I'm doing, hitting it, sticking my foot in the ground, going up. Jason Avant made a killer block, depleted the dude. He out, knocked out. I'm running in the end zone. Like, man, I, I was really, honestly, bro, I feel like I was on wings. Like, like mm. Pops probably picked me up and just flew me wow. into the end zone, bro. That's like, that's hard. how crazy But the way, the way he looked, though, when the ball was coming, the way you kept looking up, nah, like... You, he was looking at his path where the, he was, was at Like, like you knew you was going to run that motherfucker yeah. back. Hey, man, that's one of them things when you know. When you know, you know, you know. And that's yeah. one of them times, bro. On top of the world. Imagine if we had social media back then. What? what that's right. Hey, man, I, I tell these young dudes all the time, bro, they make these crazy plays and it's like... Bro, I, I would have been so not to say I ain't big, but I would have been way like crazy more big oh, yeah. if they had that shit when I was coming out as a rookie. Your college, yeah. what? Like, Lion. I was big. Yeah, man, not nah, for sure though. Is there an art in the punt return? Like, is there a certain mind frame you need to be in? Shit, is there an art in shooting a three pointer? Mm -hmm. Repetition. So how do you get reps at punt return? But we also know we're not gonna get killed from punt return. Though. Hold on, that's, I, I, that's I, a great question. How do you get reps at punt return? Though. Oh man. For me, it ain't. I mean, it, it's an art in it, but it ain't like you can get better by repetition, like how you said as a three point. It's so one of the things where you, first of all, you can't you be scared. You got it or you instinct. don't got it. It's, it's an instinct. instinct. It's like a cat. Because you looking in the air and this that's grown man coming like at you full you speed. Gotta, you damn near got to be a cat, bro. Yeah. Like for me, that's yeah. like people ask me, all, like, how am I so good and how am I so quick and why do I do what I do on the field? It's like, I'm not thinking about it. I don't, when I go on the field or when I'm lining up to be receiver and it's a dude guarding me, 
I don't have no plan in my mind that, oh, I'm about to do this. I react off of everything. Mm-hmm. So that's why, like, if you do something, I'm going to react off it. So if you think you shut me down this way, I'm going to react off and go the other way, bro. Right. It's like anything. So it's like me, I really feel like I play like a, a cat. Like, I'm just mm-hmm. You got counters for everything. You know what I'm saying? Like, agile. And like, whatever you do, I'm going to react to it and I'm going to beat you. Mm-hmm. Counter punching everything. You swinging this, I'm ducking. Ah. So that's just my mentality, I'm bro. That's, what, my that's why I am who I am. I'm gonna take, I'll take the start. Um, Everybody knows... You know, the Ben Simmons situation with, you know, contract negotiations mm-hmm. and not reporting and this, this and that. You had a similar situation like that in 2011. Um, speak to that and speak to knowing your worth and believing in yourself more than anything. I, I think it's important as a uh, as an athlete, us as athletes first, how we look at ourselves as a business and how we take our mindset of everything we do and we put into our body, if it's you know, like nutrition, you know, uh, uh, studying longer, taking care of your body, massage, like whatever it is you invest into your body is what you're going to get out of it. Right. And I think sometimes us being athletes, people are just assume we just like all these an- an- analysts and these people sit back and, you know, critique us for who we are. Like they don't really understand we have to invest in ourselves First just as well foremost. as in, like the teams, the GMs, the owners. They gonna do what's best for them as a, right. as an owner. When it's time to give a person money or to cut a person, they don't think about that. But the minute we want to take care of ourselves and mm. put ourselves first, we in trouble or we we an asshole or oh he's mm. a, a bad team. You get what I'm saying? But it's like we just doing what's best for us. So for me at that point in time, I'm like, y'all been promising me a contract and y'all haven't rewarded me with my contract. So why am I gonna continuously put my body on the line? risk getting hurt injured i go to practice and i tear anything and it's like now my contract is i'm, I'm not worthy of my contract so right. for me i feel like as athletes when we stand up what's, what's right for us we we look at as the bad guy mm-hmm. we're labeled as a as a cancer you get what i'm saying but at the end of the day you just you're looking out for the best in yourself now i'm not saying if you already rewarded with the contract and you post a show it's different you know like certain situations ben simmons certain situations is different but when you're due for something and you done put that work in and you haven't yeah. been rewarded for it. You want what you deserve. It, you got you got a right to stand up for what you deserve. Facts. Right. 2012, uh, they end up franchi- uh, franchise tagging you, re-signed a five-year contract uh, north of $50 million. Mm-hmm. How'd that make you feel? Well, well, when I got franchise, that was almost like they just did That's that for me. Way. Kind of, yeah, just mm-hmm. get them back in the Shut building. Shut you up. Yeah, like mm-hmm. we... we we gonna give you because I think that was one year for ten million, which in reality the five years I was still end up getting the ten million. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna come in there. But in my mind, I'm I know like I'm not gonna play on this one year ten million dollar deal because if I get hurt, then it's still like oh, I don't mm-hmm. have no solid. Mm-hmm. I'm not solidified in, in my future for the next three years. It's not guaranteed. Like no our security. Money. You get what I'm saying? So for me, it was just like one of the things where they was like, all right, just sign it and come in and let's try to work out a deal. So basically, I kind of knew that, so I signed the franchise. And then, like, I want to say, like, a few weeks later, we end up getting the deal done. So it was kind of like, you know, I pat you on my back, you pat me on mine. Like, we're going to get this deal. And I took that word and it actually worked out. But for me, it felt good because I finally got what I was deserving of. And and, and for me at that time, I remember they used to promise me, like, my second, third year, they was promising me they was going to redo my contract. Because back then, Philly was known for getting their players early and locking them up, like giving them some money earlier and locking them up for later in their career. So... For me, I was like, man, it, it was rewarding, bro. And mm-hmm. it was like, you know, all the work I was putting into it, it made me feel good. Uh, 2014, statistically, uh, your best season, uh, your third Pro Bowl selection, uh, and then you released <laughs> after all, everything you would have been through with that team. Right. What was that experience like? Ah, uh, yeah, he he coaching at UCLA right now. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it was uh, it was personal, man. Um, for me, coming off my best statistic year i mean with 83 catches over 1300 yards nine touchdown like you you releasing a dude after him being a pro bowl receiver like what are you doing like in my mind i'm like what's going on and what kind of was mind bothering to me was the allegations and the stories they dug up and made up that was like that was the reason why they released me oh he's a gang member he hangs out with thugs criminals he's doing you get what i'm saying i'm like bro i have no felons I have no no record. I ain't never been to jail. Like you saying, you mad at me because I grew up where I grew up and hang out who I hang mm-hmm. out with. So it's for me, it was kind of like a stab in my back, bro. And it was like everything I did for y'all and coming off my best years, like y'all just come. Like if y'all didn't want to pay me, just tell me y'all didn't want to pay me. But to mm-hmm. try to tarnish my name and who I am, crazy. Like 
And then you got other teams looking like, damn, do we want to take a risk on this dude? Problem. Like, is there something that's going to come out? Like, is he mm -hmm. about to come out? He going to jail? You get what I'm saying? It was just like, it was a fucked up situation for me. And I, I took that personal. That's why I did go to, to Washington. Every time I played the Eagles, I made them regret that decision. Let's, I mean, I, I want to touch on that a little bit because obviously he is the head coach. We're talking about Chip Kelly. He's the head coach at UCLA. And there was a lot of racial allegations um, swarming around the way he moved and, and, and perceived um, a handful of you guys. Yeah. Some of the better players on the team. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, can you speak to that a little bit? When he first came in, it was like, you, 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 you doing something that a professional athlete shouldn't have to, you know, go through. Like when you, when you first, the head coach, you come in, that's like coming in and telling you a starter, you playing BD, stack, whoever y'all starting five is, and you got a new head coach to come in and say from the get go, none of y'all starters. Like you telling me pro bowlers or all star player 10 times, whatever, Michael Vig, LaShawn McCoy, me, all the start. Like no one was a starter. He basically said everybody got to earn their spots. We looking at this dude like, bro, you know who you talking to? Like, bro, we pro bowlers, we <laughs> can pay me? way more than you. Like you talking about, we all basically don't start. So we like, from that get go, it was like, shit he came in and was trying to do, like, we really felt like we was college players. Like, we really felt like he was trying to control us on some college shit. And it was like, bro, we been through that phase already, bro. We professional athletes and we know what it takes to get it done at a high level. We've been doing this shit. So for me, that shit was kind of personal, bro. Just everything he tried to come do. And, you know, like you said, like you letting go of players this legitimately the best of the best. Me, McCoy, Michael Vicks. Like, bro, if you would have kept that team together, bro, that team could have mm. been special, bro. We could have legitimately won a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. And it was like he broke that team up and brought people in that he wanted to bring in that probably was going to yes man him or listen to every command he wanted. And it was like us, we really, we really felt like we didn't have to do that because we already gained our respect and we were who we were. Is he pulling the Ur – was he doing – was he Urban Meyer before Urban Meyer, what Urban's doing in Jacksonville, kind of trying to bring that college – It ain't going to work, bro. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, I mean, that. don't get me wrong, his offensive scheme – Cause we ball, like we had, like I said, I had my best stats, statistics from the offensive side of it. But it's the uh, the Mentality. outside, yeah. It's like the day to day. Mm -hmm. Like he wanted us to put a heart monitor on going to sleep to see how many hours people slept. You yeah. asking pro professional athletes, like we not college, yeah. bro. Yeah. He asking people to pee in the cup to see how hydrated you is. Like, bro, if you can't come in and perform the best of your ability, and you know you're a professional athlete, you getting paid all this money. What are we doing? Yeah. You get what I'm saying? So it's like he almost had like people on a leash, but it's like. You can't implement that in the professional level, bro. That's, that's not the same gonna, thing they saying about Urban Mind. Yeah, that's not gonna work, bro. Same thing. It ain't gonna work, bro. It's, mm -hmm. it's hard to do. You got to, like the Andy Reeds, the Bill Better the, like the coaches that demand respect but give respect and understand. You got a player mentality relationship. Like if you can't go holler at your head coach, like you feel like you can't talk to your head coach. How you gonna put put yourself on the line when it's in, mm -hmm. in game and you got to yeah. go on one? How you gonna put yourself on the line for your coach? You feel like he, you can't do the same for you? Yeah, I ain't riding for you. You get what I'm saying? Right. So that's just the mentality that I feel like it was went wrong with him. What was it like working with Michael Vick? You guys had a special connection. Man, my, Michael Vick, I feel like is is one of the best players I didn't ever play with. Mm. Like we we had we had the most of the most. Like if if I look back and you know do all the statistics, like we me and him had some of the biggest plays. Like legitimately, so many plays that we could pull up and look, man. And for me, like growing up. He was an idol to me, you know, mm -hmm. one of the first black quarterbacks taking first round, everything he went through. Um, you know, his one of his cousins was boys he grew up with, ended up snitching on him. He's trying to take mm -hmm. care of everybody. He had a hundred dudes rolling with him, taking care of everybody, lifestyles. Like I learned so much from him, you get know what I'm saying? Just from me being younger, looking up to him and being able to have a chance to really sit in the same rooms and have like a big bro, little bro relationship. Like, and when we first met, he was like, Man, I see a lot, a lot of you and me. Mm. And it was when he told me that shit kind of it fucked me up because I'm like, damn, like, why you say that? He was like, you know, I just see all your boys, you taking, you doing this, you doing that. Like, I was the same way, but he was like, you need to cut that because if it really come down to it, they ain't going to have your back. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If it come a situation where it's you or them, they going to choose them, you know? And it was like, he really learned, like, betrayal. Like, people really stabbed him in his back for people he took care of, you know what I'm saying? Right. So he kind of like taught me that early. So for me, I was able to see, like, you know, let me start cutting back. Let me stop doing, you get what I'm saying? Because Everybody love you when you're on top and you hand the money and you shopping and you taking sprees. You, you you know what I'm saying? Like everybody love you, but the minute you don't do something for somebody, how they feel about you? As soon as you say no, the loyalty gone. The loyalty gone. He ain't so. shit anyway. <laughs> I, hope he, I hope he get hurt. Yeah, I hope he, he get cut. Right. You get know what yeah. I'm saying? Just a little shit like that. But on the field, I mean, one of the best deep balls. I mean, you got a, a nice deep ball thrower right now uh, in Stafford, but 
Like I said, you and Mike's deep ball connection was on another yeah, level. Nah, Mike, Mike, Mike Vic. Yeah, as far as now, like you know, I, I'm intrigued to see how it's going to work out with me and Matt Stafford, Matthew Stafford. But right now, yeah, to date, Mike Vick has, has been the, the the best quarterback I played with. Just as far as the deep ball, mm -hmm. the, the home run ball, throwing the deep passes, like his arm was effortless. Mm, he used to right, throw, looks so, just sling it. He used to be like this and throw an 80 yard. I'm like, how can a man <laughs> right. do it that and throw the ball? Like you ain't even doing that. Yeah, he doing it. <laughs> That's all I'm right. like, bro, how yeah. you throw the ball 80 yards, just flicking the wrist. Mm. March 9th, my birthday, by the way, 2017, you pick yourself up a nice three-year deal with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Uh, what was it like being out there in Tampa? Uh, you had a young Mike Williams, or uh, uh, Mike, Evans. Mike Evans, right? Yeah, man. You got that Tampa was, weapons. Yeah, T Tampa was a, it was a cool vibe, man. It was actually my first time. <clears throat> I think I was just turning 30, 31 or whatever it was, and it was like, my first time in my career where I could go play in some good weather. Mm. I'm like, I'm used to being in the cold, East Coast, Philly, Washington. It was like, I had a chance to go to Florida. So <clears throat> when I first went to Florida, I got out there and Tampa was hot. I ain't, you know, I'm a Cali dude. I ain't mm -hmm. used to that Tampa, Florida, Humidity. bro. When I went out there, 110 degrees, 100 uh, percent humidity. I'm like, bro, this is gonna be brutal. That's not I remember the first game. Yeah, I remember the first game. I'm playing in the game. I'm like. If I knew it was gonna be this, I probably wouldn't have signed. Bro, I'm about there. I damn near had a heat stroke, bro. The first game, man, I'm about to die. I'm I grew like, up in that. But no, nah, it was cool, man. It was good vibes. Uh, you know, Jameis Winston was there. Like you say, we had uh Chris Godwin, uh, Mike Mike Evans. You know, the team the team was five. We we really didn't have too many. We had good players, but we didn't play that good. You know, two years we went five with five and eleven. Mm -hmm. So we never really end up. You know, Jameis kind of struggled a little bit. Me and him really really never c connected like that. And uh. That's kind of the midst mm. of that story. It is what it was. <laughs> yeah. So you head back uh, to Philly. Mm -hmm. Were you reluctant with that situation getting there, or what was your, uh, your your approach heading back to Philly? So heading back to Philly uh, in 2019, it, it, it was honestly at this point Chip Kelly was gone. They had brought a, a, a old coach back when I was used, used to be with Andy Reid. Um, Doug Peterson was the head coach, mm -hmm. so I had like a good relationship with Doug Peterson. So. I can remember when I was in uh when I was in Washington, it was like they was trying to figure out ways to get me back. Like literally like four or five years, then they was trying to get me back. Cause I was killing them so bad. Like every time I played them, it's like, and we gotta figure a way Made to a get point. this motherfucker back. <laughs> right. Like Chip Kelly gone, like let's figure out a way to get him back. So was in the talks, you know, not not a lot of people supposed to know this, but yeah, you know, we talked here and there. You know how it is when a team wants you and you know they ain't supposed to be hollering at yeah. you, but they like, we're gonna figure out a way to get your ass back. So it was just one of them things, but the reunion was actually it was a good it was good because you know I felt like I really should have never left in the first, first place. place right and it was like the person that really made the decision wasn't there no more and even though the, the GM was there and certain people was there like when Chip Kelly was there they they literally gave him the key to everything like he was like the general manager he was bringing players in like it was everything that was him so I kind of really didn't feel that much of a way towards the owner and the GM. But you know they all in it together. You know right. at the end of the day they all in it together. <laughs> First game back, you break a record uh, to get you in. I think second place. Uh, shit. You oh, surpass I... Randy Moss. I mean that's a hell of a name. <laughs> First and foremost, when you hear yourself, knowing where you come from, what you've been through, the journey you've been on, when you start passing people like Randy Moss and legends of the game like that, what does that mean to you? I mean honestly, man, in the midst of it. You know, it, you you feel good about it, but it's still like I ain't done. Cause I got more. Yeah, you get what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. It's like I, I I still know I got a lot left in the tank, and I feel like I'm I'm continuously still putting on, man. And it's like, as much as I feel like I've arrived or I've accomplished something, like I ain't done yet, bro. So I, I I'm still I'm not really content with that, cause I know. I still want to push that that mm -hmm. that, that bar. I want to push that. So needle. you ain't you ain't sat back and just thought about. I yeah, not really, kind of, bro. Yeah. I mean, you see the honestly, moment too much. Moments it be moments yeah. here and there that hit me like I see something. I'm like, damn, you know. But when you're in the midst of it, bro, you really What's you next? don't really yeah you don't really get too much caught up in it. Because if I sit back and get too much caught up in it, it's gonna take me off mm -hmm. my grind. Focus, I don't want to yeah. get all like I'm still on the needle. I want to get complacent. Uh, first touchdown with the Rams. You're tied for the most uh, 75 plus yard touch. That's fucking crazy to say. <laughs> 75 yard touchdowns. You tie the record. Uh, the most in like, what's that like for you? That that one right there was special. And and the reason the reason why I said that one was special because it happened back home. You get know what I'm saying? This this where I started playing that. You know, mm -hmm. so for me to come back home, 
Like literally when SoFi Stadium was built was where I played Pop Warner ball at growing mm. up. That soil, all that dirt right there is where I used to play ball at. Being a little hard-headed, snotty-nosed boy, like I was That's in the dope. backyards playing over there, bro. So for me to come back and score my, set, my what, ninth 75-yard touchdown, like you said, that, that number is crazy. I ain't even really know about that stat. Mm -hmm. Now, that one kind of caught me all right. I'm, I knew about the 50-yarder, the 60-yarder. But when they said 75, that might be hard for anybody to beat right there. Because the last person that had, I think, was like 1941 or something crazy. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? So, like I say, man, I'm still in the midst of I, I can't, I can't get content, bro. Maybe one day we'll sit back and, you know, do what we do and, and mm -hmm. talk about it. But as yeah. of right now, yeah. you're still going. I'm still on it. I can dig it. Uh, toughest defenses. That come to mind, a couple defense that come to mind over throughout your 13 plus year career. Mm. I would probably have to say, <clears throat> I've had to go back to the early days, like my, my rookie year. I would probably say, like the Pittsburgh Steelers, Troy Palomahu, uh, Joey Porter, mm -hmm. uh, uh, What's the what's the big uh, Harrison Harrison yeah what's his name James Harrison James Harrison Could still bench press a house um yeah that that defense was crazy uh Casey Hayward oh I can't forget about Air Reed and, and Ray Lewis mm, Baltimore it was cold Baltimore was cold back mm -hmm. then too it was something it was something about that ASC back then Townsend yeah Townsend yeah they they uh they had a corner too I can't remember his name but yeah they they were them two defenses was cold back mm -hmm. then. Mm -hmm. Off the field, uh, you were part of the Tupac All Eyes on Me project uh, with our man LT Hutton. I Shout ain't out know LT. that, bro. You didn't know that? I yeah. had a little cameo in there. Yeah, yeah mm -hmm. I know. I saw the cameo. Yeah. But I ain't know that. Yeah, yeah no, nah, but you, behind the scenes with our man LT. Talk to us how that came about and uh, some some of the other business stuff you're interested in all, off the field. Shit. So, I mean, the, the LT situation, obviously, you know, uh, LT, just the relationship with, you know, Snoop and... You know, since I've been a young kid back in going to high school, college, you know, I used to always just be around them, hanging out with them. So, you know, me and LT kind of, you know, just genuinely, you know, built a relationship where I knew he was in the music industry. You know, I was dealing with some music stuff. You know, I got a record label he was kind of helping me on. And, you know, LT used to always be like, you know, I know you love this music shit, but he was like, this movie stuff is where you need to put your money at. He's like, I could guarantee you get your money back on the movie. He said, the music... I can't guarantee you gonna make your money back on the music, but he nice. said this movie, I could I could guarantee that. So you know we came together and uh, you know I invested in the, um, the Tupac film and uh, you know he had the company called the Program Pictures, where uh, you know he had like a lot of projects you know that he was working on. But uh, yeah, the Tupac, you know, growing up, I'm a diehard. I, Tupac is one of my favorite. Mm -hmm. He on the what? Ain't he mm -hmm. up here? Somewhere? What? Mm -hmm. Of course. Yeah, you know Tupac was one of my favorites. You know getting through. When I was young and just hearing gunshots and just living in the hood, like I just throw Tupac on and he would help, you know, relieve like certain mm -hmm. situations I went through. So that two being able to have a a piece in that Tupac movie, that's like that's legendary for right. me. That's like one of my goals. Like you say a pet pee or something you on your bucket list that you gotta have before you die. Like yeah. that's one of them things to being connected with something that had to do with Tupac. Well yeah, being yeah. a producer in his movie, yeah, the a producer little long, credit, that's, you know to me, that's said, bigger than having a part in it. Yeah, nah, you're right. And then for that to be saying, like that, yeah, that was that was crazy bro, for me to even be a part yeah, of congrats that. Congrats on that, bro. Yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah, uh, you have a weekly podcast, Fade the Booth. Um, talk to us about that. You've had a cut. You've put a couple yeah. episodes out. You got some in the bank. What, what, what were you trying to get across with that? So, so Fade the Booth, man. Um, so I got hurt. I want to say I got hurt about like in 2019, and I had like a, a growing injury surgery, and I was out for the season. So I'm sitting back. I'm like, man. Year 12, I'm like, man, I can't play football forever. Like, let me figure out something I can, you know, do where it's, like, fun and it ain't hard for me. You know what I'm saying? So I'm sitting back thinking, I'm like, you know, my brother always had a camera on my face, had documentaries. <laughs> he's still shooting. Shout out to bro, 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 right yeah. there with the camera on. Yeah, at least know, he's shooting now. But uh, <laughs> I'm like, man, I, I was always, you know, in front of a camera. And it's like, this shit is easy to me, bro. So I'm like, let me... You know, bring people and then y'all too. Y'all inspired it. You know, get the kid wallow. Like you know, seeing young brothers kind of doing their thing. And I'm I'm sitting back like you know, let me let me get into the podcast industry. And for me, I just really wanted to open up and you know give you know my platform and you know my viewers just the insight to me. You know, and not only me, but you know my guests. You know, I had Lil mm -hmm. Wayne come on. Had uh, you know, Marshawn Lynch, Michael Vick, Michael Rubin, just give them a, mm -hmm. a different perspective. You know, like I had an owner on there, like a billionaire owner, yeah. just talking about like lifestyle things, like what made him 
who he was at early because he was 20 years old 13 years old had a billionaire mentality you mm -hmm. know people invested in him you know him taking out money like things that me being 12 years old i wouldn't have thought about right like how his mind was programmed like so it's just for me just opening up and talking about situations that people could sit back and know that like we all might be celebrities we all might be who we are but we still went through shit that mm -hmm. it was that defining point in our life like you know so for me to fade the booth is really just letting people know it's possible to make it like everybody that's successful we go through some and i know a lot of people be sitting back at home like oh i tried this and it didn't work so let me give up no mm -hmm. like keep going like figure out what it is you want to do so mm -hmm. for me i love inspiring man so fade the booth is really just inspiring man where can they find that at uh, so fade the booth. You can find it on uh, IG. Then you know it's on um, you know YouTube, Spotify, iTunes. You know the whole so, thing. Shout out, check it shout out, out Wallow and Gilly too, man. That's yeah, family. Shout yeah. Out to boy. yeah, they been wild. I, lo I, I love for y'all to come on mine too. Yeah. You know, we waiting on you. Waiting on him. We there. <laughs> we got to cross promote it, man. For uh, sure. Fatherhood. You yeah. got two little guys. Yeah. How important is that to you? Man, fatherhood, man, it, it, it's huge to me. I, I look at fatherhood as, you know. What do I want my kids to hear about me when they when they grow up and they become older? You know, um, what are people gonna say about their dad? You know, mm -hmm. and for me, I'm a stand up dude. I'm a respectful dude. You know, uh, I'm a hard working dude, and uh, you know, I just want them to know that you know they pops is a real one. Mm -hmm. You know, and they nice. got something to look up to. Dope. But at the end of the day, my kids gonna be real ones. They might not grow up and live how I live, but I'm gonna install that and, and and have them understanding. Like you know, you gotta get you gotta work for what you want out here. You know, so. I think being a father for me kind of, you know, let me know it's not all about myself. You know, when you before you have kids, you put yourself first, and it's like now that I have kids, I, I'm not first anymore. My mm -hmm. kids are first, you know. So that's Absolutely. how I look at it. Quick hitters, final stretch. First thing to come to mind, let us know top five receivers of all time. Top five receivers of all time. So <clears throat> I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Jerry Rice, uh, Randy Moss. Michael Irvin, Steve Smith, Calvin Johnson. Mm. Woo! That's a hell of a five right I'm, there, I'm, I'm up there. I ain't put me in there, but I'm up yeah, there, too. Yeah, nah, that's dope. <laughs> Top three artists or songs on rotation on game day? Top three artists. Uh, or songs? I got um, I got Nipsey, for sure. Nipsey Hustle on there. Um, Tupac, All Eyes on Me. Mm-hmm. Uh, third one probably would be I like the Young Jeezy. The I old, about, the, I, man, I knew I was thinking the, about you say Jeezy. I was like, why'd you say Jeezy? The old Young Jeezy, man. Yeah, yeah the old school the Snowman. Young Jeezy. Yeah. The Snowman, yeah. yeah. 103. Motivation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. motivation 101. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gotta be on there for sure. If you can go back and relive one moment in your career, high school, college, NFL, uh, up to this point, what would it be? Man, high school, bro. I, I would probably say if I could rewind time, man, I, I would want to go back to my high school days, man. I used to really have so much fun in high school, mm. being being like a junior, senior, having all them scholarships, offers, being a dude. You know, back then I had a car. Like, you know, we used to just, you ain't had no one. Yeah, you, you ain't had shit. Free. I ain't got no bills. Them moms give me a little yeah. money here and there. I'm going hanging with the homies. We hanging out, hanging with, ain't no telling what we was doing, man. I used to have fun, but I think about now, I'm, 34, I'm like, damn, where all the time go? But it's like, if you could relive it like high school, it would probably some good moments for me. Hell yeah, that shit was a blast. <laughs> top, th top three favorite NBA players to watch? Top three, uh, well, I'll see number one. I'm Braun. Gonna, nah, hell no. Nah. Kobe Cole. Bryant. Kobe, we from LA. Uh, Mamba, okay, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. You know, my, to watch, you know to watch. I, I argue with a lot of these dudes on this Kobe Bryant thing, man, because I feel like, like, don't get me wrong, LeBron is a freak of nature. Like, he's, Really one on one, but he don't he don't got that that killer instinct. I yeah, I like, say the same thing. Yeah, he don't got that dog in him. Like it's it's times where he done took over and he done did his thing, but he got dog. It just ain't the Kobe dog. A lot of times he passing the ball. Like I don't want if you the dog, you the man. I, uh, two three minutes, I don't want to see you passing. You taking over. Yeah. It's just for me, I you know. I know Kobe gonna take over. He might shoot that motherfucker a hundred times, but he gonna make about fifty of them. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. So Kobe, um, AI. Mm. Chuck. And uh my third man, my third would probably be uh I like Dane, man. Yeah, Dane. Mm -hmm. Good Dame time, mm -hmm. what do you do? Yeah, Dane time. <laughs> Dane time. Dope. Five dinner guests, dead or alive. Five dinner guests? Mm-hmm. Chopping it up about life. Mm, I would have liked to do 
Pac. Shit. Kobe. Mm-hmm. Uh, I say Eli Musk. Beyonce. And probably the last one, I'll probably go with a... Uh, mm-hmm. Man, I'm uh, Last seat. Last seat. Who can I say? Throw a comedian in there. You might want to laugh a little bit. Shit, Dave Chappelle, he on the hot seat right now. <laughs> <laughs> it ain't, to be honest, it ain't even hot. It ain't I, even hot. But hot. you know, they, they killing yeah, him they right now. Yeah, they, they tried to. They tried to. Saw Netflix, Netflix is rolling with him. Huh? They so suspended the motherfuckers who had something to say. Yeah. I wish you motherfucking would. Right. right. <laughs> they stood yeah. their ground. I love it. Last the, question. The GOAT. Okay. The last question is, remember, your answer, you got to help us get your answer on the show, right? Mm-hmm. Who do you want to see on All the Smoke? Mm. <laughs> he gonna throw that out. <laughs> Mike Big, that's easy, man. He gonna do that without it. That's easy. Uh, shit, Bron. Bron been Ooh. on it already. Oh, oh. so I just ran into Bron last night at uh, Westbrook's. They had the premiere last night. I seen Bron. I said, bro, it's time. It's season three. He's like, I'm ready. I'm yeah, ready. Bron, I think Bron will be. That, the, they, everybody that's waiting. That's reachable for but y'all. You know, you like, know, y'all it, can't do it. What's the good thing okay. about it though? It's a lot of podcasts and a lot of shows, but everybody waiting for him to oh, sit on no, that couch. No question. Hey, y'all, you know what I'm saying? They waiting for anybody, him to sit on that couch. If anybody can do it, y'all can do it. <laughs> I mean, come on, man. Come on, Gee, bro. Y'all can do it. Waiting on you, bro. Yes, sir. Well, man, that's a wrap for Sean Jackson, Los Last Angeles name. Ram, LA's finest. You can catch us on Showtime Basketball YouTube and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. See y'all next week. Salute. Peace.